This is our fifth time. I wouldn't have dreamt of what I learned here. This encourages you and inspires you. And it's so relaxing and the food is great. <laughs> I love retreats at sea. And I will do it again. And you should be here. Holy Trinity is at work full time here. How do the bishops on an entire continent tell the Vatican no to some pastoral directive signed by the Pope and still remain loyal to Rome? Stay tuned, we'll tell you. Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton's Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, you think if the bishops from 500 plus dioceses all together reject a Vatican directive, like the recent one to bless couples living in sin, and that directive was signed by the Pope himself, then these bishops would be in defiance of Rome and labeled schismatic. But recent revelations from one cardinal show how rejection and loyalty, or rejection and opposition, or loyal opposition, you could say, can coexist. Tell us about it. I've read in a strikingly candid interview, Cardinal Fridolin Ambongo Besungu, who is really the top cardinal overseeing the whole of Africa. He's president of CCAM, the Symposium of African Con Episcopal Conferences uh, of Africa and Madagascar. And Cardinal Besungu, in an interview last week, told uh, a French Catholic magazine, La Salon Beige, in quite some detail how he handled this, you know, red hot potato when dealing with the Pope and with Cardinal uh, Manuel, Victor Manuel Fernandez, who is the prefect of the Dicastery for the Doctrine for the Faith. You know, and he's also a member of the Gang of Nine, the inner circle of the Pope himself, one of the chosen cardinals handpicked by the Pope to instruct him or to work with him, collaborate with him very closely. So he's just, he's not a nobody by any means. What did uh, Cardinal Amongo, what was his immediate reaction when the uh, fiducia supplicans came out about blessing same-sex couples and couples living in sin? His immediate reaction and what steps does he say that he took immediately to redress the problem? Well, Cardinal Ambongo tells us that when Fiducia supplicants swept the world on the 18th of December, uh, the shock wave, he said, just flooded across Africa. We were all horribly shocked that such a document could come from the Vatican. And then he goes on to say, let me quote him, he said, we didn't understand what was happening at the church level. Furthermore, other churches that called us said, we count on the Catholic Church to oppose this ideology. Now, you are the first to authorize the blessing of homosexual couples. And Brad, this is something I've been talking about. Why are the African bishops so resistant, resistant to this document? And one reason is because uh, there will be an exodus of Catholics leaving the Catholic Church and joining evangelical and Pentecostal churches. And of course, there's severe opposition from Islam as well. And so in this context, in now you can understand why Cardinal Fridolin Ambongo Mizungu is telling us that other churches, non-Catholic churches, were putting pressure on them to stall the going ahead of this document. And that's interesting, Jules, because the scandal of, of, of shaking all these people away from the Catholic Church as if they are now in, for, in the tank for, for same-sex marriage, uh, which would be the appearance if you have couples coming up and blessing them in public and all this. Um, and Fernandez was uh, Cardinal Fernandez who drafted that document. He later on said, well, it's just, you know, they just have legalities down there. It's against their law and stuff like that. But here you're talking about all these people who would be scandalized uh, and, and driven away from unity with the church on all this. So so he gets all this negative reaction and, and, and categorizes, you know, clarifies it all, gets a report together and and heads to Rome. Then what happens? Well, he says he immediately flew to Rome, and uh, he uh, 
drafted a seven page, he wrote a seven page letter to Pope Francis, uh, sent it to Pope Francis at flu to Rome and met with Pope Francis. And then Pope Francis directed him to meet with uh, Cardinal Fernandez and they sat down together and drafted a letter that would eventually come from the African bishops. And that letter would categorically say that the African bishops are refusing to bless temples, but are more than willing to bless individuals. Now, that's really amazing. I mean, it's been categorized. The African bishops are all defiant and, you know, rejecting. But the letter actually that was saying, no, uh, we won't bless it, that was actually drafted in Rome with the help of Cardinal Fernandez at the direction of Pope Francis. I mean, that's just, to me, that's just amazing that that, that, that sequence comes to light. Can we, before going into Fernandez too much, can we talk about what was, what was uh, Cardinal Lomongo saying? How did Pope Francis take this news of this historically massive rejection to a specific pastoral practice that he personally signed off on? What, what, what was his re, uh, response or his uh, emotions to, uh, to the Cardinal? Well, that's why this interview is so frank and so wonderful, really, to read, because uh, Cardinal Ambongo talks about Pope Francis's reaction. He says, uh, at that same day, the Holy Father received me, and the Pope Holy Father was very sad. I must say that he was the first to suffer from all the reactions that came from all over the world, and he suffers from it because he's a human being. This doesn't make him happy. Uh, Cardinal Ambongo goes on to say that I reached an agreement with him because I told him that the solution to this issue is no longer to send us documents with theological or philosophical definitions of blessings. The people are not interested in that. What is of interest now is a communication that reassures the people in Africa that calms the spirits of the faithful. And he, Cardinal Lambongo, is talking about Pope Francis, and he, as a pastor, was touched by this situation. Yeah, to me, this just is, brings up just uh, waves of uh, revelation, really. I mean, uh, yeah, so, okay, let's go on with the story here. The story, you know, it really shows the moral impeccability, uh, not only the moral impeccability of the African bishops, but also the loyalty, really the loyalty of the African bishops to the patrine office. Uh, what happened next then? Well, uh, they sat together, uh, Cardinal uh, Ambongo and Cardinal Fernandez, at Pope Francis' direction, and then they very carefully put together this word, uh, this uh, new letter that the African bishops would ascend to and released it as coming from the African bishops. And that letter, again, as I said, was very, very direct and yet respectful. It said that, you know, African bishops under no circumstances will bless same-sex couples for a variety of reasons. However, they would be more than willing to bless individuals who, you know, of same-sex orientation. Now, Yuri, he laid out the, the reaction of Pope Francis. What was what was Cardinal Bongo's take on having to work directly with Fernandez, this, the guy, the very cardinal who caused him so much trouble to begin with? Well, uh, you know, he, he wasn't very upset. At least he didn't show that he was upset. He said, with the prefect, that's with Fernandez, we sat uh, in front of the computer, a secretary writing, we prepared a document, and we prepared the document in dialogue and agreement and in agreement with Pope Francis, so that at every moment we called him to ask him questions to see if he agreed with that formulation. And when the document was completed, Abongo said, I signed the document as president of CCAM on behalf of the entire church in Africa. And the document is titled, No to the Blessing of Homosexual Couples in the Catholic Churches. And, and what was Fernandez's take on blessing the individual, uh, as, as Cardinal Lombongo was saying, that yes, they would do that. What, what was Fernandez's uh, take on that? 
Well, Fernandes uh, interestingly acquiesced to this whole arrangement, presumably because it has come to him as you know somewhat of a major shock that an entire continent could so you know directly reject a, a document that is at the highest levels of or one of the highest levels of the papal magisterium. And that Pope Francis would then support, uh, uh, you know, uh, Cardinal Lambongo and the African bishops. Uh, uh, well, it's possible that Fernandez has had his knuckles wrapped by Pope Francis for not taking all this into consideration and not even consulting other dicasteries whose prefects are now very upset as we are beginning to learn. Yeah, you'd really think with this whole age of dialogue and synodality and go to the peripheries and stuff, you'd start having this, the conversation would start out there and not be foisted upon them as a directive, but actually start there and say, let's get some input on what do you guys think about all this? It just seems completely contrary to the whole notion of the, the, the last 10 years of, hey, we need dialogue and everybody needs to have their say at the table and all this. And here you drop something like this and let everybody else scramble with it. Um, there was one comment I wanted to... <laughs> Just it has to do with a recent, uh, a, a previous Rome dispatch. Avango is relating uh, uh, Cardinal Fernandez pointing out, "quote If we bless a homosexual, it's also to say that your sexual orientation is not in accordance with the will of God, and we hope that the blessing can help you change." And here's the punchline: because homosexuality is condemned in the Bible. And so, Jules, it was a Rome dispatch we did on the uh, Jerome biblical commentary for the 21st century. And it's interesting, Fernandez would say homosexuality is condemned in the Bible. Maybe he should read the Jerome biblical commentary for the 21st century that has a foreword by Pope Francis in there, uh, or an introduction, or what, and, and, and it seems to really present a different take on all that. Your, your comment? Well, Brad, sadly, you know, the as a biblical scholar, it breaks my heart to see this Jerome biblical commentary for the 21st century, where the exegesis is, it has virtually been turned into eisegesis. And uh, the pro-gay applications for all those texts in the Bible that are so clearly condemnatory of homosexual activities is really shocking. And it, it's totally unethical in in terms of scholarship to do that. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's amusing that Francis has written his foreword to that commentary, and that commentary has received an imprimatur uh, and a nihil obstat, which, you know, doesn't seem to have any meaning nowadays. Uh, well, we might you know, raise funds uh, uh, to send copies of uh, these uh, Jerome biblical commentaries for the 21st century to every bishop in Africa, starting with Cardinal Am Bongo, and maybe they will change their mind. Uh, forgive me for the sarcasm, but I just couldn't help it. Oh, well, Jules, that would be a great thing. Get a PDF of that and email it as a journalist, Jules, to uh, the 500 plus dioceses in Africa and get their collective take on that. See how they, uh, see how they, uh, you know, think if that imprimatur should be on there or not. That would be an interesting story. Well, there you have it. Uh, how bishops heading more than 500 dioceses can collectively reject, firmly and clearly reject, a pastoral practice that comes from the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith and is signed off by the Pope himself. Well done, Africa. Well done indeed. Jules, thanks for laying out this good news story for us today. Thank you, Brad. Thanks again for watching today's episode of Rome Dispatch. This show is brought to you by donors like Real Estate for Life. If you're looking to buy or sell a home and want to support our mission, visit realestateforlife.org. Again, that's realestateforlife.org. Be sure to tell them Church Militant sent you. God bless.